Okay, you ready? Yes, I am. <clears throat> uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you. I'm here for the part of Danny Zuko, Greece. Right, good. Uh, can I ask you a few questions? Certainly, go ahead. Uh, can you read and write fluently in Italian? Yes, I can. Excellent. And is this the first time you've ever sung in this role? To be honest, yes, but I'm sure I'm perfect for it. <laughs> okay. And uh, can I hear a song from the musical? Um, well, I... Please, I... sir, don't hesitate. You're here for the audition. Okay, okay. Summer loving happens so fast. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. Okay. Come on. Let's go to the kitchen. <laughs> Summer loving happens so fast. Summer loving happens so fast. Do you think Peter has the ability to become a star? Well, so far we have seen the verb can used for ability. But can is a very interesting verb because you can actually use it in four different situations. So can for ability, but also we can use it with requests, simple requests. So, for example, can I have some more wine, please? Or can I have some more pasta? Now, that is a simple request, all right? So, that's another example of can. Then, we can use it for permission. For example, can I go to the toilet, please? Or can I open a window? It's hot in here. And the answer would be giving permission. Sure, you can open a window, that's no problem. All right, so that's permission. Then the fourth use of can is with prohibition, can't. So, for example, Mr. Monkey, yeah, you can't use my computer. He's always using my computer and doing something to it. So, you can't use my computer prohibition, all right? So, those are the four different uses of can. Ability, permission, request, and uh, prohibition. Let's look at those now on the screen together, okay? So, ability we have already studied. A simple request. Can I ask you a few questions? Can I make a phone call? Can I hear part of the music? You know, when Jack asked, da 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 Jack and Peter, can I hear part of the music? Then, asking permission. Can I go to the party? You know, children, parents. Um, can he come with me? And can we use your car? And then you give permission using can. Yes, you can watch television for one hour, parents to children. Or sure, you can use my computer, but I won't tell Mr. Monkey that. Uh, and they can pay by credit card, for example. All right, and then prohibition, you can't go out tonight. You can't go out tonight. She can't come to the party and they can't use my computer. All right, so the verb can, very interesting ability, simple requests, permission and prohibition. Okay, great. So you're studying really well and I look forward to seeing you again very soon in the next lesson. So bye for now. Bye. Hi, Jack. Good morning. Look at this picture of Beck Nicholson windsurfing. I know him. Can you windsurf? Yes. I'm not great, but I can windsurf a little. I like windsurfing on summer holidays. And what about you? No, I'm afraid I can't. But I can swim pretty well. It's a great sport. What sports do you like doing? Well, I can play tennis, but I'm not very good at it. Oh, I can play chess very well. Chess? That's not a sport. That's a hobby. Oh, no, it's a sport. Well, can you play chess? No. 
I don't like playing cards, chess, or other table games. So what do you do during the winter? Oh, I go to the gym. Oh. I can play basketball pretty well. I can also do a little karate. That's interesting. I can do a little karate as well. <laughs> Where do you go? I like going to the karate gym on 14th Street. Oh, interesting. I'm looking for a gym. Oh, why don't we go there together? I'm usually free on Saturdays. Sure. But I never go on Saturday. It's the only day I have to spend time with Sharon. Mm. I usually go on Friday afternoons. Oh. But now I'm so nervous about my audition, I don't have time for the gym. And for Sharon, too. She's getting pretty angry. Well, if you want, I could take her out sometimes. Oh, oh Jack, you're such a good friend. <laughs> Maybe you could help me with my audition, too. All right. <laughs> OK. Hello, and welcome back to English Today, your live TV program where you can learn the English language. Now, in that last episode of That's Life, we learned that Peter can windsurf a little, Peter can play basketball, he can do karate, but he can't play chess, cards, or table games. Jack can swim, can play tennis, can play chess, can do karate, yeah but he can't play basketball. Now, they were talking about ability, and we use the verb can to do that. So, girls, let's talk about your boyfriends. What can your boyfriends do? Can they cook? Can they clean the house, like Anne? Can they make you happy? Uh, let me tell you about my boyfriend. Well, he can cook very well. Wonderful South American dishes, delicious. He can surprise me. He brings me flowers and chocolates. He can make me laugh. <laughs> um, what else can he do? Well, actually, he can't sew. Mind you, not many men can, so that's not really a problem. He can't see very well at night. Sometimes a problem. And what else? Uh, oh, yes, he can't speak Welsh. But not many people can, so again, that's not really a problem. He can do many things. So you see, I was talking about his abilities. And that's when we use can. Let's look at the screen. So in the positive form, I can say, I can play the piano. She can speak Spanish. Now notice the pronunciation of can becomes can. She can, she can speak Spanish. He can play tennis. We can speak German. All right, so can becomes can when we speak. Now, the negative form is cannot, but we abbreviate it when we speak, so it becomes can't. Now, notice the difference in pronunciation between can and can't, yeah? So, the examples are, they can't understand you, I can't windsurf, Sharon can't cook every day. And notice the form never changes. It's like should. So we say can, can't, I can, you can't, she can, it can, they can't. You never changes. So that's really useful. All right. The question form is again simple. You put can in front of the subject. So we say can you speak Italian? Can she drive? Can he cook? What can you do? All right, so the form is simple. Can with every subject form, then the infinitive without two. So not difficult. So whenever you are talking to somebody about your abilities, you use can. Now you can say to people, well, 
I can speak English now. And that's true. Great, okay, well, thank you for that. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Let's go back to That's Life. Bye. Hi, Sharon. Have a seat. Thanks, Anne. It's almost ready. What's for brunch? Oh, no, pasta. You can't cook pasta. I'm trying to lose weight. Oh, relax, dear. It's Sunday. Here. Try some. What about salt? Mmm, good. I guess I can eat this time. The salt is okay. Do you like cooking? Why don't you cook lunch for us sometime? Oh, I love cooking, but it, it, it takes time and I can't cook every day. Well, cooking's not my favorite hobby, but I'm the only one who knows how to cook in this flat. I can imagine. I really love baking cakes. Mmm, that, that's true. I remember now. Mm. And I love your cakes. Thanks, Anne. But cooking is my only hobby. I, I love going to the cinema and reading as well. I love being busy. So I don't have time to think too much. Think about what? About what's missing in my life. But let's talk about something else. So, if you like movies, there's a good film on at the cinema tonight. How about going together? That's a good idea. Let's ask Jack, too. Hello again, and how are you? Now, did you notice at the end of that last episode in That's Life that Anne said to Sharon, why don't we go to the cinema? How about going to the cinema? Now, that is a suggestion in English, and that's what I want to study with you now, because there are three different ways of making suggestions in English. Now, imagine that you say to me, I'm bored. I am so bored. I can say to you, one, well, why don't we go to the cinema? Why don't we go to the cinema? That's one way of making a suggestion. The second way is, how about going to the cinema? How about going to the cinema? And the third way is, what about going to the cinema? So three possibilities. Why don't we go? How about going? What about going? Now you try. I say to you, Oh God, I'm so tired. Make some suggestions. Yeah. Why don't you rest? How about taking a nap, which is a short rest? Very good. Next, I say, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. What do you say? Well, obvious, yeah? Why don't you eat something? Why don't you eat something? How about having a banana, for example? All right, next one. I'm free this weekend. I'm free this weekend. Suggestions. Why don't we go to the sea? Or how about inviting some friends? So those are the different ways of making suggestions. And I'd like to look at those with you now on the screen. OK, so let's go to the screen and see those written because they're very, very useful and important when you're socializing with friends. So the first one is why don't we or why don't you? Why don't we go to a show? Why don't you take a rest? Why don't we take a holiday? And why don't you come with me? All right, number one. Number two, how about plus the verb plus ing? You notice that? How about doing something. And it's the same with what about, the same 
construction. What about doing? So it's a gerund form. The examples are, how about eating in an Italian restaurant? Or how about inviting Jack? That's Sharon's idea. Or what about going to the seaside? Or what about seeing a film? Okay, so three ways. Why don't we go? What about going? How about going? So remember, you'll find those very useful when you're socializing with your friends. Now let's go back to our friends and see Jack and Peter who are talking about his audition. And then afterwards, I want to tell you some other things about the verb can, all right? So see you later, bye. Hi, Sharon. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine too. Well, I'm alone. Anne is out for a business meeting. Oh, Peter is too. Oh, he's at an audition today. Well, why don't we have lunch together? Now? <laughs> yes. Yes. No, something simple. Okay. <laughs> Great. Hi, Jack. What's up? Oh, you're here. Um, <clears throat> I'm preparing lunch. Anne is out and Sharon is coming. Great. I'm hungry. Hi, Jack. Hi. <clears throat> Alice is here. Yeah, she's in her room. Sorry about that. I would like to be alone with you, but you know. Yeah, I know. Okay, Sharon, I'm the cook. What would you like? Why don't you cook some pasta? Sounds good. What kind of pasta do you have? Well, we have macaroni, uh, spaghetti. Let's have lasagna. Mm, that's too much work. Shall we have spaghetti? Great, excellent, with spaghetti with meat sauce. Great, and how about having some wine with lunch? Oh, it's the middle of the day. I have to work later. Let's just have some mineral water. Fine. Mineral water it is. And what about a salad, too? A nice green salad with tomatoes and onions? Your wish is my command. And about my wish? I want wine. Well, here's some red wine for you. Thanks. And do we have any rolls? No, but there's a loaf of bread. Great. We're set. Hello again and welcome back. Did you notice how Jack said, I'd like to be alone with you? I would like to be alone. Now that's a very interesting construction and that's what I want to study with you now because it describes a desire a wish or a preference, okay? Now, let me give you some examples. I have a desire. I have a great desire. You know what it is? I have a desire to have Italian food tonight. I'd like to go to an Italian restaurant because I love Italian food. Now, I'd like a romantic table for two with candlelight. And I'd like to start with a big plate of pasta. And I'd like to have some good red Chianti wine. And then after, I'd like to have some, um, let's see, boar. Yes, boar. You know boar? B-O-A-R. Boar. Excuse me. Boar. You know... Yeah, wild pig, okay. Boar with polenta, which is typically Italian. 
Mm, followed by a dessert. I'd like to have a dessert with lots of mascarpone. Fantastic. That's heaven. Then I'd like to finish the dinner with, oh yeah, traditional Italian espresso. And, oh, I'd like to have the dinner with my boyfriend. But he's playing tonight again, so would you like to have dinner with me? Now, those were all examples of positive forms of would like. Let's look at the question forms. Now, to do this, I am going to transform into a waiter. Here we are. And I am a waiter in a very luxurious restaurant. And I have the pleasure of serving Mr. Monkey in the restaurant tonight. So let's go and see what Mr. Monkey wants. Uh, good evening, sir, and welcome to our restaurant. Now, are you ready to order? Yeah, great. So, um, would you like to start with a soup? We have a wonderful soup tonight. It's leek soup, very delicate, and I'm sure you like it, sir. Yes, perfect. So that's one leek soup. And what about the main course? Would you like some fish? We have some fresh salmon from Scotland and I really recommend it, fresh from Scotland. Okay, right, uh, one hamburger. Fine, sir. Um, and to drink, what about uh, a wonderful French red wine. We have some very good red wines here, yes? Fine, okay, um, then one Coca-Cola with your hamburger, fine. Um, well, how about finishing your dinner with some cheese and liqueurs from France? Again, we have a very good selection of cheeses. Oh, yeah, right, okay, one, one toffee ice cream with chocolate sauce. Sure, uh, I will see what I can do, sir. One toffee ice cream, and a... okay, good. So enjoy your meal and I'll see you later. Thank you, sir, goodbye. Toffee ice cream, those were examples of questions. Would you like? Now, let's go to the screen together and see that language, all right? Now, usually would like, as I said, is used for wishes, wishes that you have. So we often use it in restaurants. And the form is would like plus the verb. Would you like to go? Or just simply, would you like some wine, you can say. Now, the question is important because we don't contract the form. Let's look at the examples on the screen. Would you like to come out with us this evening? Would you like to come out? Okay, would they like to have some wine? Uh, what would you like to order, Mr. Monkey? Um, and where would you like to go this weekend? So the question form, what would you like to do or what would you like? Then the positive form. Now, in the positive form, we contract. You know, very often we contract in English. So I would like becomes I'd, I'd, I'd like. And in fact, Jack said, I'd like to be alone with you, remember? Other examples, they'd like to have dinner. They'd like to have dinner. So you see the pronunciation is not easy. They would becomes they'd, okay? He'd like to buy a TV. He would, he'd like to buy a TV. She'd like to visit her friends this weekend. She'd like, so I'd like, you'd like, she'd like, they'd like, all right, the contractions. And 
In the negative, we also contract and we say she wouldn't like. Would not like becomes wouldn't, wouldn't like. <laughs> Difficult, isn't it, English pronunciation? So she wouldn't like to stay for the weekend and I wouldn't like to do that. So very, very important this form, I'd like to, because very often we talk about our preferences and as we said, our wishes. Great. Now let's go back and watch our friends in That's Life. And afterwards, I want to tell you something you don't know about some and any. Okay, see you later. Bye. What's on tonight? Um, just a moment. Can you hand me the TV, guys? Oh, here you are. What would you like to watch? Let's watch a documentary. Ah, oh, documentaries are boring. Why don't we watch LA Kids? Please, more soap operas. I can't stand soap operas. How about watching the news? Fine. Let's watch the news and then maybe a film. Right. That's a good compromise. Shall we make something to eat? What would you like? How about some sandwiches? Tuna fish sandwiches? Okay. Tuna fish sandwiches. Why don't you go and prepare them for all of us? All right. It's my turn now. Why? What do you mean? We had lunch with Sharon today, and Jack was the cook. Oh. What a piece of news. And what would you like to drink? Let's have a beer. Great. We've got some good lager in the fridge. TV sandwiches and a beer. Paradise. Hello, everybody. Hi, Peter. Enjoy paradise. Guys, great news today. Oh, right. The audition. So, have you got the part? Well, yes and no. I mean, they want to see me for a second call. Oh, great. Let's celebrate it. Oh, wait, wait. Don't move. Uh, napkins. Oh, guys, what about my celebration? Oh, shut up. Peter. Okay, okay, fast. We're losing it. Oh, please. Don't be stupid. This is a serious problem. How about having some pizza? Great idea. Let's go. Uh, food, food, food. All they think about is food. Hello and welcome back for some more English. Now, do you remember in a previous lesson how we learned about some and any? And that usually we use some in a positive form. For example, I've got some brothers. And any is for the negative and the question. For example, have you got any money? Negative, I haven't got any time. Well, now I want to teach you something else, something special about some and any. And to do that, I need some help. I need some help from something or other. Mr. Monkey, I'll be right back. Don't go away, don't go away, okay? Aha, yes, here we are. This is fine. Here I am. Now, imagine I'm on a plane, okay? I'm an air hostess, so listen to what I say. Madam, would you like some coffee? Would you like some coffee? Yes, and some milk with your coffee? Certainly. Sir, would you like some tea? Ah, okay, would you like some water? Certainly, some water. And some biscuits? Certainly. Now, did you notice I was asking questions using some? Now you say, 
wait a minute, that's not possible. You taught us that we use some in the positive. Now that's very interesting because there is an exception in English. There are often exceptions in English. When we use the question form, would you like, or do you want, which is like an offer, then we use some. So this is very important because it's very common. And let's look at it on the screen now. So we said that usually we use some in the positive form, any in the negative and question. Well, the exception is this. With offers and requests, we use some. So we would say, for example, would you like some lunch? Or would they like some biscuits? Now, when you're on a plane and you hear an air hostess who says to you, any coffee, any biscuits, it's wrong, it's wrong. You must tell her, no, 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 we say some. <laughs> okay, watch out for that. So, would you like some lunch? Would you like some biscuits? And then requests, can I have some cheese? Notice the question, can I have? It's a request, can I have some cheese? Or can we have some water? All right, so that is an exception with some and any when we use offers and requests. We use some, okay? So important to remember. That's the end of this lesson, and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye. Hello, hello to everyone. Welcome to the Travel Programme, the TV show for all travellers. We talk about foreign countries, holiday destinations and tourist attractions with Christina Teng, our travel expert. Hi, Christine. Hi, Lucy, and good morning to all travellers. You know, Christine is a real globetrotter. She visits 14 to 15 countries a year. Is that right, Christine? That's right, Lucy. I travel a lot. So, what are you talking about today? Well, I want to talk about a new tourist destination, Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. Mmm, interesting. Dubai's a fascinating city, modern and traditional at the same time. That's true. In Dubai, there are new skyscrapers next to traditional Arab souks. Uh, but there's something else. Do you know why Dubai is famous throughout the world? No, I don't. Please tell us. We're curious. Because of the shopping, Dubai has duty-free shopping. You can find everything there. Designer clothes, cameras, high-tech goods, all at very low prices. So it's a real shopping paradise. Yes, Lucy, it is. But Dubai is also famous for its beaches, blue sea and white sand. It sounds wonderful. When's the best time to visit Dubai? The best time to visit is from October to April. During this period, the weather's good and there's almost no rain. So, it's a winter destination? Exactly. In summer, it's very, very hot there. It's about 40 degrees centigrade. Oh, wow. Really hot. And what is there to do in Dubai? I mean, besides shopping, of course. Well, there are many things to do there. You can go on desert safaris, camel rides, you can swim. And if you like sports, there are many centres for snorkelling and diving. OK, so you need a lot of time to do all of those things. Well, if you prefer to relax, you can just sunbathe. That's true. What about hotels? Is it easy to find accommodation in Dubai? Of course. There are many hotels at all prices. Most of them are new, with large rooms and good service. And food. What about the food? You can find all kinds of food in Dubai. Middle Eastern and international food. Lebanese, French, Italian, Indian and so on. Well, Dubai is the home of sun, sand and shopping. Do you like all these things? Then Dubai is the place for you. Goodbye, Christine. Goodbye, Lucy, and goodbye to all travellers. See you again soon to learn more about the world of travel with the Travel Programme. Bye-bye. Are you a traveller? A traveller is a person who travels to many foreign countries.
And what's a foreign country? A country that is not your country. I'm from Scotland, so for me, France is a foreign country. And a foreigner is a person from a different country. I am a foreigner in France. But a tourist is someone who's on holiday in a foreign country. Let's have a look at some other useful words and expressions to talk about travelling. I called Christine a globetrotter. That's a person who travels all around the world from one country to another country. She visits America, then Japan, then Kenya and Spain. A holiday destination is a place where people go on holiday, like Paris and Ibiza. A tourist attraction is something people visit, like Buckingham Palace and the Louvre. An important word for travellers is accommodation. Accommodation is the place where you stay and sleep. A hotel is a kind of accommodation. A bed and breakfast is another kind of accommodation. What do people do when they go on holiday? They visit tourist attractions, like the souks in Dubai. A souk is a traditional Arab market. Or, if they prefer the sun and the sea, they go to the beach. When I go to the beach, I like to relax and sunbathe. Sunbathing is when you sit or lie in the sun and do nothing. Maybe just read a book. But there are often water activities you can do, like snorkelling and diving. Snorkelling is like swimming, but you have a mask to see under the water. Diving is swimming deep under the water with oxygen tanks to breathe. Notice how we say the United Arab Emirates. The article the is used when the words United, Union and Republic are in the name of the country. For example, we say the United States of America, the Republic of Ireland, the Soviet Union. But we say Spain, Brazil, Australia, France. And we don't use the with names of cities. Dubai, London, Madrid, Rome. That's all for now. See you soon. Good evening, good evening. It's time for music now with Music World. In this programme, we talk about music with our expert, Tony Moore, and, of course, we listen to good songs. Now, what kind of music do you like, Tony? Oh, well, I like pop music and rock music too. Mmm, pop and rock are great types of music. Well, what are you talking about this evening, Tony? I'd like to talk about new ways of listening to music. Sounds interesting. What do you mean, exactly? Well, I mean downloading songs from the internet. You know, Lucy, this new way of listening to music is very, very popular today, especially amongst young people. Really? Maybe because it's a cheap way of listening to music. That's true. It is cheap. But that isn't the only reason. There are many music websites on the internet. You can find all kinds of music. Old songs, unusual types of music, pieces of music by unknown artists or bands. So there's a good choice. Exactly. There's a very good choice. It's a good way of listening to new styles of music. And, you know, many people like to listen to the latest records before they buy them. I see, I see. So, listening to music from the internet is very popular. But how does it work? Is it difficult to download songs? No, no, it's very easy. You go to the music website, choose the song you want to listen to, pay with your credit card, and then download the MP3 file to a computer. Remember, you have to have your credit card ready. It's illegal to download music files without paying. Right, I'll remember that. But, Tony, what's an MP3 file? Well, an MP3 file is an audio file. It's the type file we use for pieces of music. But remember, Lucy, you can only listen to MP3 files on your computer or on an MP3 player. OK, this is very interesting, but it's quite difficult for me. I'm not good with technology. I usually listen to music on my stereo. Oh, don't worry, Lucy. It's always difficult at the beginning. 
Now, I'll give you an example of how it works. Are you ready? Yes, I am. OK. You want to download a piece of music. This is what you have to do. You go on the internet and you go to the music website. A music website is like a library of music. Here you can search by artist, type of music or genre, CD title or song. Do you follow? Yes, yes, I follow you. Good. So you choose the song, download it to your computer, then from the computer, download it to your MP3 player. An MP3 player is a music container. It can store 7,500 songs. 7,500 songs. Wow, so many. Well, you're right, it isn't very difficult. OK, well, it's time to say goodbye to our viewers. So thanks, Tony. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. See you again soon here on Music World. And what would you like to listen to next time? Time again to repeat some of the useful expressions and words that we used. To start with, notice how we always say, listen to music. We say, listen to the radio, listen to a CD, and listen to me. How do we listen to music? With a CD player, you listen to CDs. With a record player, you listen to records. And with a cassette player, you listen to cassettes. Now, a lot of people use MP3 players because they download music from the internet to their computers as MP3 files. An MP3 file is the music file you find on a music website, which, as Tony said, is like a music library where you can find lots of different songs. Now, that was a lot of information, so let's see now. You download music from the internet to your computer. Notice the use of from and to. You download the music from the computer to your MP3 player and then you can listen to music on an MP3 player. Here, notice the use of on. You listen to a CD on a CD player. You listen to a record on a record player and you listen to music on the radio. We also say go on the net and when we do research on the internet, we say that we navigate or surf the net. The net is the abbreviation of the internet. Remember, I asked Tony, what kind of music do you like? What kind of is a useful question form, not only to talk about music. We ask, what kind of food do you like? What kind of beer do you like? What kind of wine do you like? In these questions, kind means type or genre. Genre is another word Tony used. Pop is a genre of music. Classical is also a genre. So, happy listening. Until next time, bye. Now, let's watch the whole episode together. Look at the subtitles carefully. Listen out for the language points that we've learned together, OK? Enjoy your viewing. Now, let's watch the whole episode together. Look at the subtitles carefully. Listen out for the language points that we've learned together, OK? Enjoy your viewing. Now, let's watch the whole episode together. Look at the subtitles carefully. Listen out for the language points that we've learned together, OK? Enjoy your viewing. Now, let's watch the whole episode together. Look at the subtitles carefully. Listen out for the language points that we've learned together, OK? Enjoy your viewing.
Hello again, and here we are for a new lesson. Now, in this lesson, we're going to talk about our abilities, what we can do and what we can't do. For example, I'm a teacher. I can teach. I can sing. And I can cook. These are things I can do. I can't drive a truck. That's an example of something I can't do. I can't play football. So these are the things we're going to learn. Can in the positive, can't in the negative. But first, let's listen to our story. Jack and Peter are talking about sports, about sports they can do and sports they can't do. Hi, Jack. Good morning. Look at this picture of Beck Nicholson windsurfing. I know him. Can you windsurf? Yes. I'm not great, but I can windsurf a little. I like windsurfing on summer holidays. And what about you? No, I'm afraid I can't. But I can swim pretty well. It's a great sport. What sports do you like doing? Well, I can play tennis, but I'm not very good at it. Oh, I can play chess very well. Chess? That's not a sport. <laughs> That's a hobby. Oh, no, it's a sport. Well, can you play chess? No. I don't like playing cards, chess, or other table games. So what do you do during the winter? Oh, I go to the gym. Oh. I can play basketball pretty well. I can also do a little karate. That's interesting. I can do a little karate as well. <laughs> Where do you go? I like going to the karate gym on 14th Street. Oh, interesting. I'm looking for a gym. Why don't we go there together? I'm usually free on Saturdays. Sure. But I never go on Saturday. It's the only day I have to spend time with Sharon. Mm. I usually go on Friday afternoons. Uh. But now I'm so nervous about my audition, I don't have time for the gym. And for Sharon, too. She's getting pretty angry. Well, if you want, I could take her out sometimes. Oh, oh Jack, you're such a good friend. <laughs> Maybe you can help me with my audition, too. All right. Okay. Now, after that dialogue, we know that Peter can windsurf a little, can play basketball, and can do karate. But he can't play chess, cards, or table games. Jack can swim, can play tennis a little, can play chess, can do karate, but he can't play basketball. Now, girls, what about your boyfriends? What can your boyfriends do? Hmm? Can they cook? Huh? Can they clean the house? Like Anne. Can they do the washing? Can they make you happy? Okay, now let's study the grammatical form of the verb can. Now, in the positive form, it's really quite easy. It's can plus the infinitive. For example, I can play the piano. She can speak Spanish. He can play tennis. You notice that the third person doesn't change. Fantastic, yeah? There's no S. We say he can play tennis. She can swim. Okay, so all the forms, I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, use, can. Now, the negative. It's the same. The negative doesn't change for all the subjects. The only problem is the pronunciation. In the positive, we say can, but in the negative, we say can't. Notice that? Can't. Some examples. They can't understand you. I can't windsurf. Sharon can't cook every day. All right, so cannot becomes can't. And the question form? Well, the question form too is easy because you just invert can and the subject. So we have can you speak Italian? Can she drive? Can your boyfriend cook? 
What can you do? Okay, so that's the verb can. Now we're going back to our story and we're going to the kitchen where Anne and Sharon are talking together. They're preparing lunch. And then we're going to study the language of making suggestions. But first, let's listen to them. Hi, Sharon. Have a seat. Thanks, Anne. It's almost ready. What's for brunch? Oh, no, pasta. You can't cook pasta. I'm trying to lose weight. Oh, relax, dear. It's Sunday. Here, try some. What about salt? Mmm, good. I guess I can eat it this time. The salt is okay. Do you like cooking? Why don't you cook lunch for us sometime? Oh, I love cooking, but it, it, it takes time and I can't cook every day. Well, cooking's not my favorite hobby, but I'm the only one who knows how to cook in this flat. I can imagine. I really love baking cakes. Mmm. That's true, I remember now. And I love your cakes. Thanks, Anne. But cooking is my only hobby. I, I love going to the cinema and reading as well. I love being busy. So I don't have time to think too much. Think about what? About what's missing in my life. But let's talk about something else. So, if you like movies, there's a good film on at the cinema tonight. How about going together? It's a good idea. Let's ask Jack, too. Now, at the end, Anne said to Sharon, how about going to the cinema? Now, that's a suggestion in English. So, how do we make suggestions in English? Well, there are three possibilities. And let's study them together now. For example, if I say, I'm bored. I'm bored. What can you say? Well, you can say, why don't we go to the cinema? Why don't we go to the cinema? That's one possibility. That's a suggestion. A second way is, how about having a Chinese meal? We use how about plus the verb and ing. How about having a Chinese meal? That's the second way. And the third way is very similar. What about going to a show? We use what about plus the verb in the infinitive. So these are the three possibilities. Why don't we go? How about going? And what about going? Okay, now it's your turn. I say something and you make a suggestion, all right? I'm so tired. Suggestion? Yeah. Why don't you go to bed? Or what about having a rest? Another example? I'm so hungry. Suggestion. Yeah. Why don't you eat something? Or how about having a yogurt? One more example. I'm free this weekend. A suggestion. What about going to dinner tonight? Or why don't we go to the sea? So those are the three ways of giving suggestions. Why don't we? How about? And what about? These are important suggestions when you're socializing with people. Now let's go back to the story where Jack and Peter are talking together. They're talking about Peter's audition and he's upset. He's nervous. So let's go and listen to them now. Okay, you ready? Yes, I am. <clears throat> Uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you. I'm here for the part of Danny Zuko, Greece. Right. Good. Uh, can I ask you a few questions? Certainly. Go ahead. Uh, can you read and write fluently in Italian? Yes, I can. Excellent. And is this the first time you've ever sung in this role? 
To be honest, yes, but I'm sure I'm perfect for it. <laughs> okay. And uh, can I hear a song from the musical? Um, well, I... Please, I, sir, don't hesitate. You're here for the audition. Okay, okay. Summer loving happens so fast. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. Okay. Come on. Let's go to the kitchen. <laughs> Summer loving happens so fast. Good. Now, up until now, we've studied can for ability, but we can use it for other things too. In fact, we can use can in four different situations. Ability, requests, permission, and prohibition. Let's look at those. The first, for simple requests. Can I ask you a few questions? Remember in the story, Jack plays the part of the person auditioning, and he says, can I ask you a few questions? So, can is used here for a request. Some other examples. Can I make a telephone call? Can I hear the music? Can I help you? All right, so those are simple requests. Then we also use it for permission. For example, can I go to the party? Can he come with me? Can we use your car? That's for asking permission. So, can I use your computer? The answer could be, yes, you can, or no, you can't. And then, prohibition. For example, parents who say, you can't go out tonight. Can't. Remember the pronunciation. I'm sorry, but you can't go out tonight. So, can for ability, requests, permission, and prohibition. It's a very useful verb in English. Good, so goodbye for now, and we'll meet again in our next lesson. Bye. Hello, and welcome back. Are you ready for your next lesson? Good, because we're going to learn a lot of interesting things in these next lessons. In the first lesson, we're going to learn how to express desires and wishes. What do I mean? Well, let me give you an example. I can ask this question. What would you like to do this evening? What would you like? What would you like to do this evening? And I can answer, I'd like to go to the cinema. I'd like, I would like. So we use would like in order to express desires and wishes. And you'll hear this language a lot in the next episode of the story. So, the next episode. Jack is alone in the house. Anne has got an appointment. Peter is at an audition, as always. So, Jack decides to phone Sharon and invite her for lunch because he wants to speak to her privately, probably about the past. So he invites her and she accepts. But things don't go quite as he expects. Let's go and join them together now and listen for those words would like. After, we'll come back and practice it together. OK? Let's go. Hi, Sharon. How are you? I'm fine, too. Well, I'm alone. Anne is out for a business meeting. Oh, Peter is, too. Oh, he's at an audition uh, today. Well, why don't we have lunch together? Now? <laughs> yes. Yes. No, something simple. Okay. Great. Hi, 
Jack. What's up? Oh, uh, you're here. Um, <clears throat> I'm preparing lunch. Anne is out and Sharon is coming. Great. I'm hungry. Hi, Jack. Hi. <clears throat> Alice is here. Yeah, she's in her room. Sorry about that. I would like to be alone with you, but you know. Yeah, I know. Okay, Sharon, I'm the cook. What would you like? Why don't you cook some pasta? Sounds good. What kind of pasta do you have? Well, we have macaroni, uh, spaghetti. Let's have lasagna. Mm, that's too much work. Shall we have spaghetti? Great. Excellent. With spaghetti with meat sauce. Great. And how about having some wine with lunch? Oh, it's the middle of the day. I have to work later. Let's just have some mineral water. Fine. Mineral water it is. And what about a salad too? A nice green salad with tomatoes and onions? Your wish is my command. And about my wish? wine. Well, here's some red wine for you. Thanks. And do we have any rolls? No, but there's a loaf of bread. Great. We're set. Did you notice in that episode that Jack said I'd like to be alone with you. I'd like. I'd like is the contraction of I would like. I'd like to be alone with you. And would like is the construction that we use to express desires, wishes, and preferences. Now, let me give you some examples. I have a desire. Tonight I have a deep desire. Let me tell you. I'd like to go to an Italian restaurant. I love Italian food. And I'd like a romantic table with candlelight. I'd like to start with a big plate of pasta. And um, I'd like some good red Chianti wine to drink with my pasta. And then I'd like... Mm, let's think. Some wild boar with polenta. Yes, wild boar. Do you know wild boar? Boar. B-O-A-R. Boar. It's like pig. Delicious. And to finish, I'd like a dessert with lots of mascarpone. Fantastic heaven. Paradise. And then, to finish, of course, the traditional Italian espresso coffee. Great. That's my desire. And I'd like to have this dinner with my boyfriend. But my boyfriend's playing jazz again. So why don't you join me for dinner? That would be great, wouldn't it? OK? So those are positive sentences with would like, I'd like. In the positive form, we use the contraction with all the subjects. For example, I'd like to be alone with you, said Jack. I would like becomes I'd like. They'd like to have dinner. They would becomes they'd. Now, that's not easy to pronounce. They'd like to have dinner. He'd like to buy a new TV. He would like. He'd like to buy a new TV. She'd like to visit her friends this weekend. She would. She'd. She'd like. Okay? And also in the negative, we contract. So, would not like becomes wouldn't like. Wouldn't. Wouldn't like. Okay? 
she wouldn't like to stay for the weekend. And I wouldn't like to do that. It's a difficult pronunciation, yeah? Wouldn't. Wouldn't like. All right? Now, what about the question form? Well, that's not difficult because we just invert the verb would and the subject. Listen to these typical questions that waiters ask guests in a restaurant. What would you like to eat? Would you like to have some wine? Would you like still or sparkling water? What would you like for dessert? Good, that's would like. Now let's go back to our friends and listen to the next part of the episode. Here, the team are sitting and deciding what television program to watch together. And after, I want to tell you something you don't know yet about some and any. So, let's join them. What's on tonight? Um, just a moment. Can you hand me the TV guide? Oh, here you are. What would you like to watch? Let's watch a documentary. Ah, oh, documentaries are boring. Why don't we watch LA Kids? Please, more soap operas. I can't stand soap operas. How about watching the news? Fine. Let's watch the news and then maybe a film. Right. That's a good compromise. Shall we make something to eat? What would you like? How about some sandwiches? Tuna fish sandwiches? Okay. Tuna fish sandwiches. Why don't you go and prepare them for all of us? All right, it's my turn now. Why? What do you mean? We had lunch with Sharon today, and Jack was the cook. Oh. What a piece of news. And what would you like to drink? Let's have a beer. Great. We've got some good lager in the fridge. TV sandwiches and a beer. Paradise. Hello, everybody. Hi, Peter. Enjoy paradise. Guys, great news today. Oh, right. The audition. So, have you got the part? Well, yes and no. I mean, they want to see me for a second call. Oh, great. Let's celebrate it. Oh, guys, what about my celebration? Oh, oh, shut up, Peter. Okay, okay, fast. We're losing it. Oh, please, don't be stupid. This is a serious problem. How about having some pizza? Great idea. Let's go. <laughs> food, food, food. All they think about is food. Now, do you remember in a previous lesson, we learned some and any? And do you remember we said that usually we use any in questions? For example, have you got any money? Or have we got any bread? Well, now I want to teach you an exception to this rule. Imagine you're in an airplane, okay? Usually after takeoff, an air hostess walks down the aisle and asks, Would you like some tea, sir? Some coffee, madam? Some biscuits? Some juice, sir? Now this question is strange, isn't it? Because in the previous lessons, we learnt that in question forms, we use any, not some. 
For example, is there any wine in the house? Well, that's true, but this is an exception. And as you know, the English language is full of exceptions. So, when we use the phrase, would you like, for people's desires, we use some in the question form. We say, would you like some tea? Would you like some juice? We also use it with, do you want, which has the same meaning. So we say, do you want some coffee, sir? Would you like some tea? So the exceptions are for offers and requests. Would you like some lunch? That's an offer. Would you like some biscuits? That's an offer. Do you want some wine? That's an offer. And examples of requests? Can I have some cheese? That's a request. Can I have some water? That's a request too. So that's a very important rule to remember because we use it a lot when we speak English. Good. That's all for this lesson and we'll meet again in the next. Bye. Hello, hello to everyone. Welcome to the Travel Programme, the TV show for all travellers. We talk about foreign countries, holiday destinations and tourist attractions with Christina Teng, our travel expert. Hi, Christine. Hi, Lucy, and good morning to all travellers. You know, Christine is a real globetrotter. She visits 14 to 15 countries a year. Is that right, Christine? That's right, Lucy. I travel a lot. So, what are you talking about today? Well, I want to talk about a new tourist destination, Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. Mmm, interesting. Dubai's a fascinating city, modern and traditional at the same time. That's true. In Dubai, there are new skyscrapers next to traditional Arab souks. Uh, but there's something else. Do you know why Dubai is famous throughout the world? No, I don't. Please tell us. We're curious. Because of the shopping. Dubai has duty-free shopping. You can find everything there. Designer clothes, cameras, high-tech goods, all at very low prices. So it's a real shopping paradise. Yes, Lucy, it is. But Dubai is also famous for its beaches, blue sea and white sand. It sounds wonderful. When's the best time to visit Dubai? The best time to visit is from October to April. During this period, the weather's good and there's almost no rain. So it's a winter destination? Exactly. In summer, it's very, very hot there. It's about 40 degrees centigrade. Oh, wow. Really hot. And what is there to do in Dubai? I mean, besides shopping, of course. Well, there are many things to do there. You can go on desert safaris, camel rides, you can swim. And if you like sports, there are many centres for snorkelling and diving. OK, so you need a lot of time to do all of those things. Well, if you prefer to relax, you can just sunbathe. That's true. What about hotels? Is it easy to find accommodation in Dubai? Of course. There are many hotels at all prices. Most of them are new, with large rooms and good service. And food. What about the food? You can find all kinds of food in Dubai. Middle Eastern and international food. Lebanese, French, Italian, Indian and so on. Well, Dubai is the home of sun, sand and shopping. Do you like all these things? Then Dubai is the place for you. Goodbye, Christine. Goodbye, Lucy, and goodbye to all travellers. See you again soon to learn more about the world of travel with the Travel Programme. Bye-bye. Are you a traveller? A traveller is a person who travels to many foreign countries. And what's a foreign country? A country that is not your country. I'm from Scotland, so for me, France is a foreign country. And a foreigner is a person from a different country. I am a foreigner in France. But a tourist is someone who's on holiday in a foreign country.
Let's have a look at some other useful words and expressions to talk about traveling. I called Christine a globetrotter. That's a person who travels all around the world from one country to another country. She visits America, then Japan, then Kenya and Spain. A holiday destination is a place where people go on holiday, like Paris and Ibiza. A tourist attraction is something people visit, like Buckingham Palace and the Louvre. An important word for travellers is accommodation. Accommodation is the place where you stay and sleep. A hotel is a kind of accommodation. A bed and breakfast is another kind of accommodation. What do people do when they go on holiday? They visit tourist attractions, like the souks in Dubai. A souk is a traditional Arab market. Or, if they prefer the sun and the sea, they go to the beach. When I go to the beach, I like to relax and sunbathe. Sunbathing is when you sit or lie in the sun and do nothing. Maybe just read a book. But there are often water activities you can do, like snorkelling and diving. Snorkelling is like swimming, but you have a mask to see under the water. Diving is swimming deep under the water with oxygen tanks to breathe. Notice how we say the United Arab Emirates. The article the is used when the words United, Union and Republic are in the name of the country. For example, we say the United States of America, the Republic of Ireland, the Soviet Union. But we say Spain, Brazil, Australia, France, and we don't use the with names of cities. Dubai, London, Madrid, Rome. That's all for now. See you soon. Good evening, good evening. It's time for music now with Music World. In this programme, we talk about music with our expert, Tony Moore, and of course, we listen to good songs. Now, what kind of music do you like, Tony? Oh, well, I like pop music and rock music too. Mmm, pop and rock are great types of music. Well, what are you talking about this evening, Tony? I'd like to talk about new ways of listening to music. Sounds interesting. What do you mean exactly? Well, I mean downloading songs from the internet. You know, Lucy, this new way of listening to music is very, very popular today, especially amongst young people. Really? Maybe because it's a cheap way of listening to music. That's true. It is cheap. But that isn't the only reason. There are many music websites on the internet. You can find all kinds of music. Old songs, unusual types of music, pieces of music by unknown artists or bands. So there's a good choice. Exactly. There's a very good choice. It's a good way of listening to new styles of music. And, you know, many people like to listen to the latest records before they buy them. I see, I see. So listening to music from the internet is very popular. But how does it work? Is it difficult to download songs? No, no, it's very easy. You go to the music website, choose the song you want to listen to, pay with your credit card, and then download the MP3 file to a computer. Remember, you have to have your credit card ready. It's illegal to download music files without paying. Right, I'll remember that. But, Tony, what's an MP3 file? Well, an MP3 file is an audio file. It's the type file we use for pieces of music. But remember, Lucy, you can only listen to MP3 files on your computer or on an MP3 player. OK, this is very interesting, but it's quite difficult for me. I'm not good with technology. I usually listen to music on my stereo. Oh, don't worry, Lucy. It's always difficult at the beginning. Now, I'll give you an example of how it works. Are you ready? Yes, I am. OK. You want to download a piece of music. This is what you have to do. You go on the internet, 
and you go to the music website. A music website is like a library of music. Here you can search by artist, type of music or genre, CD title or song. Do you follow? Yes, yes, I follow you. Good. So you choose the song, download it to your computer, then from the computer, download it to your MP3 player. An MP3 player is a music container. It can store 7,500 songs. 7,500 songs. Wow, so many. Well, you're right, it isn't very difficult. OK, well, it's time to say goodbye to our viewers. So thanks, Tony. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. See you again soon here on Music World. And what would you like to listen to next time? Time again to repeat some of the useful expressions and words that we used. To start with, notice how we always say, listen to music. We say, listen to the radio, listen to a CD, and listen to me. How do we listen to music? With a CD player, you listen to CDs. With a record player, you listen to records. And with a cassette player, you listen to cassettes. Now, a lot of people use MP3 players because they download music from the internet to their computers as MP3 files. An MP3 file is the music file you find on a music website, which, as Tony said, is like a music library where you can find lots of different songs. Now, that was a lot of information, so let's see now. You download music from the internet to your computer. Notice the use of from and to. You download the music from the computer to your MP3 player and then you can listen to music on an MP3 player. Here, notice the use of on. You listen to a CD on a CD player. You listen to a record on a record player and you listen to music on the radio. We also say go on the net and when we do research on the internet, we say that we navigate or surf the net. The net is the abbreviation of the internet. Remember, I asked Tony, what kind of music do you like? What kind of is a useful question form, not only to talk about music. We ask, what kind of food do you like? What kind of beer do you like? What kind of wine do you like? In these questions, Kind means type or genre. Genre is another word Tony used. Pop is a genre of music. Classical is also a genre. So, happy listening. Until next time, bye. Hello and welcome back to English Today. And this is DVD 3 of the beginner level. And in this DVD, you will see two more episodes of our story, That's Life. And then, in our special TV programs, you'll see an interview with a travel expert about Dubai, a new destination, followed by a discussion with a music expert in Sing a Song. Then in the grammar section, we will study the modal verb can, making suggestions with would like, and more about some and any. Okay, so have fun. Hello and welcome back to English Today. And this is DVD 3 of the beginner level. And in this DVD, you will see two more episodes of our story, That's Life. And then in our special TV programs, you'll see an interview with a travel expert about Dubai, a new destination, followed by a discussion with a music expert in Sing a Song. Then in the grammar section, we will study the modal verb can, making suggestions with would like, and more about some and any. Okay, so have fun.